Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about Space Without Rockets Aerocene, which is a project that I did last November, November 2015. It was the first major project that I did <coughs> since becoming freelance and leaving the Arts Catalyst, the science art organisation where I'd been working as curator for 17 years. And um, so I'm now a free man, so to speak, and able to do crazy projects like this. And um, the story starts here <coughs> in um, White Sands Desert. Um, <clears throat> and I came to this place to meet these people, uh, the Seft One, which is um, Ivan Puy and um, Andres Pedilla Domene, also known as uh, Chango and Bicho, which is me Mexican for monkey and bug. And these half-brothers traveled across the Mexican railroads in this uh, road rail vehicle you can see here as a railway wheels and also road wheels. And it was a um, project, really, to um, um, draw attention to neoliberalism in that um, they used this vehicle to explore the uh, Mexican passenger railroads, which had closed abruptly on, upon privatization in the 90s and entire communities were left without railways. So they built this Back to the Future vehicle and um, actually showed it at ICEA 2012 in Albuquerque. And I went down to meet them on the Mexican border. That's um, Django, Ivan Puig, and um, traveled with them in this vehicle across uh, White Sands Desert, which we can see here. And um, just to digress a little bit, I'll be um, going from here next week to uh, Shrishti School of Art, uh, Shrishti Institute of Art, Design and Technology in Bangalore to continue a three-year project called Future of Transportation, which was basically stimulated by projects like this. But um, just to talk a little bit about these, these ama this amazing remote area in which I found myself, this vehicle, by the way, was brought to the UK and was shown outside FACT and um, also at Furtherfield in Finsbury Park. Um, I won't talk much more about it, only to say that the location is right near the Mexican border and this is where I went to meet um, Thomas Saraceno. Um, has everybody heard here of the artist Thomas Saraceno? Oh, some people getting some nods. Okay, he's an Argentinian artist, brought up in Europe, and um, he became famous for some of his projects, which are quite large-scale museum projects, which um, are, are based on Buckminster Fuller's dream of uh, living and floating in cloud cities. But here we are on the Mexican border, not far from White Sands. And interestingly, this is the one place that Donald Trump hasn't even thought of starting to build a wall yet, because there's no wall. You can actually see through to Mexico, and here's a chap in Mexico selling ice cream. And um, it's because of these two brothers that co-owned a factory, another long story. You can actually walk across the Mexican border and buy um, ice cream in, in that place. But um, I imagine if you tried coming the other way, there's a lot of video surveillance and guns pointing at you. But we went and bought an ice cream and drove up to White Sands to start planning this project. Oh yeah, so this is an example of one of Thomas's cloud cities, just to give you a context. And this is a project I did with him with the arts catalyst called Poetic Cosmos of the Breath, which was this solar inflated dome that happened at dawn off the M25 in a place called Gunpowder Park. And this is the kind of project Thomas has been doing, flying himself in these um, balloons as a symbol for the future cloud cities in which he wishes to live. So, when Thomas came to Mexico and to the Mexican border, he gave me a book. And that book was by an engineer and scientist called John Powell, which asked the question, when we go into space, when we send things up into space, when we do all those things that float around in orbit, that kind of like, you know, give us the possibility to use our phones, why do we always have to do this? In other words, this happens, um, well, now I suppose about 90 to 100 times a year, launching into space with vast amounts of hydrocarbons. So this artist basically started a dialogue with engineers and scientists to ask, why don't we float into space instead? And this was a project um, that John Powell is actually doing in California at the moment. 
And it's based on the principle that we could possibly one day travel into space in inflatable structures. Now, again, I can't go into this in great detail, but this is a prototype inflatable structure being built at the um, facility. This is the company, JP Aerospace, otherwise known as America's other space agency. So Thomas Saraceno was working. I can't bring John Powell to stand here with me, but if I was an art, an art engineering, art science collaboration, he'd be standing there making the case for how, in a three-stage process, and this is a prototype, we could build um, the versions of the International Space Station that literally float in the atmosphere and why we could not float up in balloons and why we could not launch with ultralight materials into orbit, thus saving on sustainability and burning hydrocarbons. We wanted to do a project in the desert that involved the launching of a vehicle that would make people think about this. This is another project by Thomas, which is called Museo, Anth uh, sorry, Museo Aerosola. And this is a community project that was set up by the artist and happened spontaneously now in several cities, where um, people basically set up associations for gathering um, waste material and in large-scale workshops, stitching them together and floating them in the air, rather like this. So this is an example of a transformational project, if you like, set up by an artist. But going back to White Sands Desert, uh, sorry, just to say Thomas also launched this kind of project, which was a, an unmanned um, balloon that was followed by GPS that traveled across from Germany to Poland. And uh, this is in the context of his uh, project to set up an art school in which um, all the um, undergraduate students will also have to sign up to become balloon pilots. So White Sands Desert, this is where we went. Thomas was flying a kite, and it's very close to this place, White Sands Missile Range. So here we have in White Sands an extraordinary um, historical continuum. This is the place where, um, as people like Neil White over there knows, who knows his Cluey, his Cluey history, where um, the first atomic bomb was exploded. It's also the place where Operation Paperclip took place. Has everybody heard of Operation Paperclip? No, 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 no one's heard of it. Oh, great. So Operation Paperclip was where, um, in a rather chilling uh, reflection of what might be happening now, um, a, a number of Nazi scientists were brought um, to the United States by ship with uh, V2 rockets, and they were brought to this place um, to basically test those V2 rockets. It was a large-scale operation by the United States and the UK, of course, also took part in the Britain also took part in this, to get the German scientists out of Germany before they were all arrested, rounded up, and sent to war crimes um, tribunals where they should have been, and instead used um, to get their technology to um, start to kick off the start of the Cold War and then the space race. And Operation Paperclip involved, and actually interestingly, involved um, the father of one of the um, key people in the Leonardo network, Frank Molina, the father of, um, of, um, of, of Roger Molina, who um, was the person who in 1947 attached the uh, a rocket, one of these rockets here actually, called the WAC Corporal to the V2 and um, um, managed to achieve one of the first um, suborbital flights in preparation for Apollo and also in a chilling uh, reenactment also managed to bomb Mexico or land in Mexico by accident crash land in a, in a uh, graveyard in Sierra Juarez right by the border where we were standing. So the US has invaded Mexico once. Um, so again, uh, just going back, why am I showing this gentleman? This gentleman is called G General Timothy Coffin, who is, I had to meet actually, and usually I get a laugh out of this, but I think since the founding of Trumpistan last week is less funny. Um, this gentleman I had to meet because we were going to do our balloon launch in uh, White Sands um, National Monument, which is a rather, well, a rather wonderful civilian picnic place, and we were refused permission um, with two weeks to go to the launch, so I had to go cap in hand to 
uh, after a lot of security clearance to meet this gentleman to get permission to use his missile range. When you're doing these large projects, you have to talk to everyone to get them done. So here we are. We are in White Sands. We arrive with a balloon made by Cameron Balloons in Bristol. There's Tomas. This is a Slovenian balloonist. Those are his technicians. And we achieved in the desert the first ever human solar plowed launch of a um, the first ever registered aircraft to carry a human um, by solar power alone. So you can see back here that the, we're starting like this. This is about 5 a.m. in the morning. And with the sun's only the solar power, this thing is being um, inflated. And you can see it's flying. So this is a project we did with about 50 visiting artists and, oh my God, I haven't shown the second project yet. Five minutes, how many? Okay, well I won't, what? I won't get to the website. Okay, and it also, um, I'm looking very relieved at the, at the launch. Became a little uh, demonstration for Space Without Rockets. This from the left is Ivan Puig, Tanya Candiani, who was represented actually in the No Such Thing as Gravity show. Nahum, who is in the audience here, hiding behind a sign. There he is. And Ale de la Puente, who organized the first Mexican Zero Gravity flight not so long ago as well. So that's the um, end of the first section of my talk. And I've been told I've only no, got... I, I think I may be wrong. Oh, oh you got it wrong. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm suddenly again. hurrying. I'll raise you again. What? I'll how how long again. have I got? Just keep talking. No, 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 just, just give me a time. I need a time, and then I'll stick to it, John. Just give me a time. This is the first part, end of yes. first part. Have I got time to show the website? Go on. Okay. Because there's another section that size after this. So I can rush through it, or I can show the website. I need your help to get to the website. Um, okay, I'm going to show a little video of this. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So this is a little film made with a 360-degree camera by... Oh, how do I make it? Oh, God, it's the double-click thing, isn't it? It's the left hand. Make it bigger? Okay, so actually this is... Where's the... There should be a little cursor. How do I make it play? Okay. How do I... Oh, here we go. So this is actually shown, done with a 60-degree GoPro by Ewan Chardonnay. Just to give you a sense of it. So here we can see it in action. Just to sort of give you a little sense of the atmosphere there at dawn in White Sands. And you can actually see everyone is actually rather participatory because as the sun filled the balloon, it, it kind of gets really strong. So at the end, we had about 15 people holding on to it. Because it was the missile range, we didn't actually have permission to do an untethered flight. So let's go all the way around. Okay, well, that gives you a sense of it anyway. Okay, let's go on to the next, the second part. Actually, shall I just take any quick burning questions on, on that first part, or shall I keep going? Any burning questions? No? Keep going, okay, keep going. Can I get back to my thing? Yeah. Sorry, I, I need your help. Okay, and full screen. So, okay, so this is the second project I'm going to talk about, which is a project I did in the summer in southwest France, which is a, a slightly less ambitious, but also kind of may, maybe broader speaking project. It was at the Maison des Arts Georges Pompidou in Cajar and in the Valais du Lot in rather idyllic surroundings. And um, one of the things we did here was to invite seven artists to 
imagine how, in a site-specific sculptural setting, you might think about the Earth as a near-Earth planet, and how, if that was an inhabited near-Earth planet, how that thing might have developed. It was actually came out, the idea came out of a, of a, a conference which I spoke at at Roehampton University here in London, um, which was called Frontiers of Life, which was actually one of the more obscure conferences I've ever spoken at because it was about anthropologists who studied exobiologists. But having gone to that, I suddenly thought this would be a great idea for a, uh, a summer project here. So this is the um, French artist Thomas Les Bouges, and he got this. If you have a look at this thing, you actually see these all over France. And he like polished it, and he put a FM radio station in it. So of course, when you land on a planet, what do you need? And it's really interesting, actually. In Antarctica, they never thought of this until some artists went and did it. They never had a radio station in Antarctica. And in fact, some artists from uh, New Zealand went and did it for the first time. But the first thing you need is to communicate. First thing you need is radio. So this is our kind of landing base in Exoplanet Lot, which is the name of the exhibition. And um, the artist Tanya Candiani, again from Mexico, decided that, OK, there wouldn't be um, any telephones or electronic communication. We'd have the radio station, but otherwise we'd have to use large ears to listen to all the things that are happening in Mount the Valley. So this was established as a site-specific sculpture. This is Tanya Candiani. And I'm going to show you a video by her later, working on a three-dimensional landscape. But here she took um, some research that she'd done into a balloon competition, again, more balloons, um, in Toulouse from the uh, 17th century and thought about different designs for balloons. She's really interested in the kind of forking paths where technology might have gone in the past. And this is the project that we did as a performance um, in one of this rather ornament, wonderful ornamental pool in, um, in the Valais du Lot, um, this piece called Floating Boat Basket. And um, interestingly, Thomas Las Bouges also took part in this um, flying his drone above it to get some aerial shots. So this was actually done as a performance with people standing on the road. I'll show you a little bit video. This is a night performance with an artist called Ludwig and Thomas Lesbouges again by the river. But this piece um, is by the, um, the French uh, collective, um, French UK German collective Hey Hey, who have anyone heard of Hey Hey? Yes, thank you, five, great. Hey Hey come out of a, a whole load of other projects which I've kind of been doing based around autonomous infrastructures and they kind of connect back to the first Ceft image you saw in that way, although both projects um, occurred in parallel. This is called Centipede, which is a, a design project which they did. This one rather wonderful valley where we were working is connected by an abandoned railway line and here's Naomi, he gets everywhere, um, riding the train. Um, between, uh, and as you can see, um, they have children, so they have to do everything with their children. Um, but we, we had to clear this railway line to build this uh, velo train. To, uh, and now again, thinking about on an exoplanet, how would we move about the exoplanet? And so we um, actually got a grant from the French media organization to um, uh, Decrem to build this thing. And um, so this is a, another project. Um, this is a near future science fiction novel that was written by um, the curator turned uh, historical novelist, Tracy Waugh. She is quite well known for having written a classic book on performance art called The Artist's Body. Here she, 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 she wrote about a, an exoplanet called Meander, which is um, basically uh, is the subject of an ex expedition from Earth looking for a habitable planet, because we screwed up the one we're on. Surprise, surprise. And um, she uh, also did it as a form of, um, like, uh, shall we say, vernacular fiction. Those of you who have visited France know that um, when the Tour de France goes through places, people chalk on the road, Allez Chambéry, or whoever the, the latest uh, cycling star is. So she used that technique to put chapters of her, uh, her book. And you can see this is me on the bike looking at it. Caroline Le Mahorte, who built this interdimensional portal for arriving on the exoplanet. 
um, which is again in the open air. And finally, in San Silk La Popid, this is the former summer residence of André Breton, where um, he would gather with the surrealists to do experiments with automatic writing and hypnotism. And again, now a mantra, we invited to do a hypnotism at the opening night where all the people who attended were able to be hypnotized to go to their exoplanet. And now one can take questions about the use of hypnotism as a form of technology. Okay, so questions, quick questions. 